Hello everyone, and welcome to my hardcore profession picking guide. In this guide, I'm going to take into consideration that some of you might trade with other people, but it will also take into consideration that you're maybe staying with the true hardcore rules where you're not allowed to use the auction house or trade. But before I talk about each profession, if you haven't already decided what to play, then my class picking guide might help you decide. You can find this in the description below the video. So the first profession I'm going to talk about is fishing. And remember, this is a secondary profession, so everyone can learn it, no matter how many professions you already have. Fishing is so underrated in hardcore. It allows you to get so many materials and not only a fish. So as you level up fishing, you'll slowly also unlock the ability to fish in floating wreckage. When you fish in these pools, you have a chance to get a trunk. And in these trunks, you will find different materials that will help you level up major professions. For example, leatherworking, tailoring, blacksmithing, and even engineering. So when you open up these trunks, there's a chance that you get consumables, leather, and cloth. So why is this such a big deal? Well, let's say that I'm, for example, an engineer with engineering and mining. Now I don't have the opportunity to skin creatures for leather, and at some certain level ranges, you might need leather as an engineer to continue leveling up or maybe even make a useful item. So if you're not allowed to use the auction house or trade with other people, well, then you could get stuck right here. And then you would have to abandon mining and level up skinning. So this is why I felt like it was so important to highlight fishing in the beginning, as it can help many different professions. Next on this list is another secondary profession, first aid. And first aid is one of the best ways for me to make gold as a hardcore character, especially if I was also able to use the auction house or trade with people. So who should be picking first aid? Every single class in the game, even if you have a heal ability. Sometimes you might be low on mana and for example play a paladin where you could just bubble and use first aid. That way you will save a lot of mana and you can get back into combat even faster. No matter what, then first aid reduces your downtime and increases your leveling speed, because the healing provided is way better than any food. Another big benefit is that you can collect materials and craft anti-venoms. So if you're hit by a poison effect, then you have the ability to remove these, and sometimes these poisons can do quite a high amount of damage, or maybe be the thing that kills you when you get to low health. In the beginning, I also mentioned it was a great way to make additional gold. When you're leveling, and if you kill different humanoid targets, then you'll also be rewarded with cloth. And this cloth you might winter if you don't need it for tailoring or first aid. But if you have first aid, then you can convert it into bandages to make additional gold, simply because a bandage sells for more than a cloth at least when you get to silk cloth or above. So by selling all the mage we fried here to the winter, then I've made a total of 5 gold. But by converting this into bandages, I'll then be making even more gold. So every time you FK, you can convert bandages and make a profit. Next on this list is a major profession, and it's either going to be the best or the second best profession to pick as a hardcore character. As an engineer, you can make many useful gadgets. For example, grenades that does a re damage and has a chance to stun targets. And if you make a big mistake with your grenades, then you can still survive by spawning a target dummy. The target dummy has a lot of health and tries to taunt all nearby enemies. In most cases, this will also allow you to get away without dying. So having two gadgets that can help you survive is a game changer and why this profession is so useful. As a low-level engineer, you also have the opportunity to craft different goggles, so these you can equip at low level even before many other people will be able to get a helm. The only downside is that you'll need leather to craft these, so what you could either do is to start with skinning, get a bit of leather and swap it into engineering, or you could always level up fishing and find different crates that contains leather. No matter what, then you will need to pick mining if you also level up engineering or blacksmithing. With mining, you get different ores you melt into bars, and these bars you'll need for many other professions. And you also get different stones and gems that is also useful for, for example, engineering and blacksmithing. 
so mining will be mandatory to choose if you need to level up one of those professions. Unless you're going to trade or use the auction house, then you could actually combine this together with the other best or second best profession in the game. And this is alchemy. Why alchemy is in the S tier is because it allows you to craft mana and healing potions, but also other potions and elixirs that will increase your leveling speed. Some of them either increases your health, armor or stats, and some of them even grants you health per second. The quality of these elixirs and potions will of course increase as you level up alchemy, so you can use this profession from level 5 and all the way up to 60. And even at level 60 it's still a useful profession, also because you can craft different flasks that will improve your character's performance by a lot. And in some guilds it will even be mandatory to use a flask if you wish to join their raid group. One of the major reasons why alchemy is also so important is because you have a chance to get this rare recipe and this will increase your movement speed by 50%. So if you accidentally pull too many monsters or you need to make an emergency exit fast, well then you could just pop one of these potions and get away successfully. Another potion that has to make it to the list is the invisibility potion. This will turn you invisible for 15 seconds. If you perform any actions that will do damage or any kind of buff, then you'll break this effect and you're not able to use this potion if you're in combat. But still an amazing item that allow you to either sneak up on an enemy or pass through a difficult area. The profession to combine together with alchemy is herbalism. It's going to be important that you pick up herbalism as fast as possible, so the moment you reach level 5. Because at that level range there will also start to show up a lot of different herbs when you level. And if you decide to pick up this profession when you reach level 10, then there's a high chance you will swap to the next zone and not be able to pick up the new herbs. By the time you reach level 300, you can also pick up the most expensive herb, the Black Lotus. This is a material you'll need to combine together with other materials to make different flasks. And like I mentioned in the alchemy part, these flasks is pretty much going to be mandatory at level 60 if you wish to raid as a hardcore character. The Black Lotus can only spawn at some certain locations. I have made a guide with all the different spawn locations and you can find a link to this video in the description below this one. And in that guide I also share my different tricks that makes me able to farm these lotus a lot easier. And if you wish to passively increase your herbalism then you can play a tauren for the racial, become a leather worker and craft the leather working gloves that increases herbalism by 5 or even get the enchant that also increases your herbalism by 5. Next on this list is enchanting. And enchanting is honestly not too bad in the beginning as you level up your character. Because at level 5 you can make the lesser magic wand. You will of course need some enchanting materials to craft these, but you can combine this profession together with some other professions that I'm gonna talk about in a moment. This allows you to craft different green items you can disenchant and then you can craft this wand. Having a wand as for example a priest, mage or even a warlock is going to increase your leveling speed by a lot, also because that way you can do damage without spending any mana. And if you continue to level up enchanting to level 70, then you can craft a level 13 wand, the greater magic one. The downside of being an enchanter is that you can't really trade with anyone, so you're not able to level up your profession and sell the enchants. And it even seems like your enchanting skill has to be quite high before the enchants is relevant. So to me it seems like it's a lot cheaper and easier to level up herbalism and alchemy if you wish to get some stat bonuses. Also because you end up disenchanting so many green items you could instead have wintered to make you some gold for your first mount. However the moment you reach max level you can also start making some amazing enchants that will increase your character's performance by a lot. And maybe you're even going to sell these enchants to other people that is going to trade with each other. And that way you can also start making a lot of gold, of course if you're lucky enough to get some of the rare formulas. The best profession to combine together with enchanting has to be tailors, also because the wands that you are going to use is used by cloth users. And people who level up tailoring, yeah that's either a mage, a priest or a warlock. Already at low level you start benefiting from this profession, because you can start making your own 6 and 8 slot bags. 
On top of this, you can also make some fairly decent green items. And even if you don't need them, well, then you can disenchant these to level enchanting. And to be honest, making these low level tailoring items requires next to no material and effort. So that's why this profession is so good together with enchanting, because you can level up enchanting quite fast just by farming linen cloth. By the time you reach level 125, then you can also make the spider silk boots. Some level 20 rare boots with stamina, intellect and spirit. The spider silk you can start farming at around level 20. The pearls you can collect by killing different sea creatures. They have a chance to drop a clam and in this clam you can find the pearl. The most difficult part might be medium leather. So if you're not going to trade or use the auction house, then you have to either level up skinning or you could level up fishing. Because as a fisher, you can also get medium litter. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then go back to the fishing part in the video. Once you reach level 300, you can also learn three different epic patterns. These epic patterns is collected inside different dungeons. There's going to be a chest for warlock, priest and mage. And each of these chests is going to be your best in slot before you start raiding. If you haven't leveled up fishing to collect litter, then you could always become a skinner and collect this yourself from all the different beasts in the world. Skinning is a great way to get raw gold as you level up your character, because you can just winter this right away and get silver. Skinning is especially useful on a fresh server when there are so many different dead corpses. Many people don't level up skinning, so you can just run around and collect free silver. Another big benefit of doing this is that you now have a lot of different leather. This letter you then keep for when you need to swap to, for example, engineering or tailoring, because you can use the letter to speed level the other professions. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you could always just vendor the letter, because a stack of light letter is 3 silver, a stack of medium, 10, heavy is 30 silver, and thick is 60 silver, and then you even have rock letter too, which is 1 gold a stack. So definitely a good way to make some additional gold for your first mount. Or you could keep all the materials if you plan to level up letter working. To be honest, then I don't really like letter working that much. Yeah, you can make some armor punches, maybe a few green items, or an enchant that increases your armor. But many of these items increases your spirit, and to be honest, then it isn't a stat that I prefer when I play hardcore. I would much rather have more agility and stamina. There is of course some items that is quite powerful for certain level ranges, but these will also require many different materials that you can't just collect by skinning. And if you go to the open world to farm these, then you might end up spending so much time just getting there and then farming as well. In that time range, you could just have gone to a dungeon and maybe collected one or more rare items. The benefit of leatherworking appears when you get to max level. As any melee class and even a hunter, it's going to be amazing to craft your devil saw set, because these items will be your pre read biz. The downside of this is that you might not be able to craft the leggings. You will need cured rock tide for these, and this is made with a salt shaker, a material or well, an item you craft as an engineer. So if you can't trade with other people or use the auction house, well, then you might have a big problem right here. Unless you level up enchanting as you level your character, craft the soul shaker, and then swap to leatherworking at max level. Another big benefit of choosing leatherworking is that you can craft the pre read biz healer cloak. Just like leatherworking, then I feel like blacksmithing isn't that great as well as you level up your character. Yeah, in the beginning, you might be able to craft some green weapons, but some of the materials you will need to collect is collected in higher level zones so where there's a high risk that you might end up dying. For example, this item here requires silver bars, and these you usually start getting at around level 20. So you will need to risk your character's life just to craft a level 12 item. And let's be honest, in the open world there's many different vendors where you can buy weapons. For example right here, where you can buy a level 13, 17, and even a level 19 two-hand weapon. And there are so many of these vendors all over the world. I've even made a guide with different armor and weapon vendors, and you can find this in the description. Just like leatherworking, then the benefit of this profession will appear at max level. 
because by this point you can craft different epic items, for example mail and plate items, that increases your fire resistance. So these will be quite useful for when you need to start raiding Molten Core. This also means that it's going to be important that you make it all the way up to 60. So why level this profession after you level your character, when you could choose another profession that might increase your survivability, for example engineering, or maybe alchemy. So what professions will I pick? Well, it's either gonna be mining and engineering, or herbalism and alchemy. I'll most likely be going with engineering, because the target dummy and grenades is an easy way to counter a death, especially if you pull too many targets. But it's also super useful against griefers, because if they pull a bus or many targets towards you, well, then the target dummy might also save you. I'm also gonna level up first aid, so I have a way to heal myself in combat, but also to make additional gold. And I'll of course also level up fishing to get additional materials that will help me level up engineering. All I need to do now is just to decide what class I need to play on official hardcore. And I feel like this is such a difficult decision, because I would like to play mage, but I would also like to play something new for a change. It's quite tempting to play either hunter or rogue, as they have an ability to avoid dying, with Vanish and Feign Death. These two spells will not only improve my chance of making it all the way up to 60, it will also be useful against griefers or people who randomly ninja pulls the entire dungeon or something else that could cause you to lose your character. So what profession and class will you play? Let me know this in a comment below the video. And for a lot more hardcore classic videos and guides, make sure to check out the channel or subscribe to get notified the next time I post one. As always, thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Peace!